Man, what a pretty day. All right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Bama saltwater fishing episode. Oh, man, Bobo wants to come out. Come on, Bobo. Come on, boy. What you doing? Ah, don't go down. Ah, don't go down there. Don't go down. You can hang out on the porch. What's up, Bobo? What's up? Oh, what is it? What is it? But anyway, excuse the noise outside. They're doing uh, some, a lot of construction, still a bunch of Hurricane Sally rebuild. But if this is your first time tuning into the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And if you have, I appreciate you. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So we're gonna be doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. It's gonna be a catch and cook, but it's gonna be blue crabs. It's not gonna be a fish this time. I did go last week with my cast net and I cast netted some mullet, but we're gonna use that mullet that I caught in the net for the crab bait. So we'll go back and uh, I'll show you that footage of where I cast net that mullet. Yeah, there we go. Got one. All right. Woo! <laughs> Friggin' mullet, that's what we're after. Heck yeah. All right, we're gonna get in the freezer because I did freeze that mullet I just caught. And this is it right here. So freshly frozen. Crabs don't really mind a frozen bait too much. If you can use it fresh, use it fresh. But if you can't, it's fine. But I'm gonna put Bobo inside so he doesn't run around everywhere. What you doing, buddy? You got your toy? Huh? Oh, what you doing, huh? You're a good boy. Yes, you are. <laughs> Bobo, the shizu. All right, grab your toy. We can go inside. Come on, get your toy. Get your toy. Here. Nah, eh, eh. Get your toy. Here. Here. Come on, let's go. Let's go inside. All right, I'm gonna go down to the crab traps and uh, I'm gonna grab a knife and let's bait the crab traps up. It's a beautiful day today. Check that out. Sun's out, water's nice and calm, sailboat's going across. It's pretty. All right, I gotta come to the scout here and get in the boat and grab my knife. It's a little frozen, so I'm gonna have to break it up a little bit here before I can cut it up and we'll throw it in the crab trap. But let's go to our traps. All right, I'm gonna get a mullet out. I had to let him thaw out a little bit. We'll slice this thing up. Just literally in half. That's it. Just gonna do that with the rest of them here. All right, get them all together here and we'll go over to my traps. So this is a crab trap. It has two entrances on this one and it's just like a funnel. So those crabs can go in, but they can't come back out. And then it has two rings on it so the little crabs can escape. It's got a rope tied to it. I got a float over here. And then this is where you put the bait is in the top flap up here. There's a little cage to throw your bait in. So we're going to take some of this mullet, take about half of what I cut up and toss it in there and then close it up. Just a little last band there. I'm going to toss this sucker out. Normally when you're looking for blue crabs, you want to find some sort of structure such as rocks like riprap and pilings or whatever. And these are some old pilings. I have a lot of crabs that usually hang around here. So I'm just going to toss this sucker out and let it soak for a few hours and then I'll come back and check it. And I'm going to bait the same thing. I have another one here. I'm going to bait it with the rest of this mullet, toss it out and uh, then come back and check it. There we go. There we go. I did that one fairly close. So. All right. All right, I got both of those soaking with some cut up mullet. And uh, we're gonna come back in a few hours and see what we got. All right, time to go check the trap. Let's see what we got. What a beautiful day. Roll tide. <laughs> oh man. All right, well, I'm gonna go check my traps here and see if I got any more. I've been saving up a whole bunch from the past week in a little minnow pen. So I'm going to pull these up and see if there's any in the trap. All right, got another one. And that one's a keeper. Look at that bronze belly, or rust belly is what you call it. Man, that's a pretty blue crab right there. They do have to be five inches from 
the top of their shell tip to tip so but that's a keeper right there let's pull another one oh man hey got two more <laughs> telling you that mullet worked pretty good so there's one and that one's a female see how it has like a uh, a pouch underneath it that one's a female there's no eggs on it so i can keep it and both these are legal size look how pretty those color those claws are they don't call them blue crab for no reason look at that orange tips on their claws and beautiful blue got my cooler here open that up and this trap is old you can tell this one actually survived hurricane sally which is weird it was tied to that one pole right there all the other poles shifted a lot and got pulled out and our seawall uh backfill is missing but this freaking crab trap stayed tied to this dang uh four by four here so pretty crazy what some things will do shake you loose but there we go check that out oh you're mean looking <laughs> you mean little joker That's funny, look at him. Big one. All right, just pulled this one in, and I do have two in there, so I'm gonna empty that one out as well. Get in there, get in there. All right, man, those are big. This one's a female, and you can tell because that pouch down there. You can keep both species, but you wanna make sure there isn't that orange spongy looking stuff, which is the egg sac on, the, uh, on this crab. And they have to be five inches, from the tip of one side of the top of their shell, which is a carapace or carapace, I'm terrible at pronouncing it, to the other side. So that's gotta be five inches, which that's definitely more than five inches. So, but you just wanna make sure. And that one's the male, but you can literally grab them right where they're on their back flipper here. And majority of the time they can't get you. That's what I caught just now in like the past couple hours of just letting the traps soak. So I did do this all week to try to get enough to, for dinner because I only let out two traps. So I'm gonna pull some out of this bait pen and uh, put them all in the cooler and prep them to grill. I'm gonna pull these out. So I got about maybe 20 or so crabs right now between the ones I caught today and the ones I've caught previously this week. So I'm gonna empty them all in this uh, cooler here and get ready to clean them. All right, that's the last one. Man, these things are beautiful. Look at the colors on them. So they're ready to pinch though. That one's got a freaking oh <laughs> they, they, they will get you. They are not afraid to pinch you. And they freaking hurt. Alright, I'm gonna take these back up near the water hose and I'm gonna start cleaning these crabs. Everybody has their own different way of cleaning these crabs, and I've done it every type of way that you can pretty much think of. Today I'm gonna do it pretty simple, but I am gonna clean them. I'm gonna pop the shell off, I'm gonna pop the guts out and uh, clean them good so we can season them good as we uh, get them on the grill. Get them to my cleaning table here. I got the crabs in the cooler. I got a bucket for the uh, parts I'm gonna discard. And then this is a clean bucket for the cleaned, ready to cook crabs since I wanna grill them right after this. So what I like to do first, take a water hose, spray them down, get the uh, pretty much the algae and whatever else kind of dirt and sand is on them initially. They make a funny sound as they're moving their mouth to keep their gills wet. I'm gonna grab a blue crab. This is a male. Don't want them to pinch me, but you wanna make it quick and humanely as possible. I like to wrap my thumb around the legs and pop top of their shell off really quick like that. And then take the front part of them off, I guess that'll be their face. So take these gills off, which is called the devil fingers. And like I said, everybody has their own way of doing it. This is just one way that I'm doing it. So, and then what I like to do, discard this and then spray it off. Get all everything out of there, it's slimy. But that right there is a clean blue crab, the way I'm doing it today. And it is ready to be seasoned and put on the grill. So I'm gonna throw this in the bucket. And now I got like probably 20 something more, maybe 19 more blue crafts to go. So I'm gonna do all these and we'll go get the grill ready and then we'll start grilling. All right, got all the crafts clean. I'm gonna open the grill here. Chew. This grill made it through Hurricane Sally. Pretty crazy. We just had to kind of sand it down and repaint it. 
So I got my charcoal here. <laughs> this will get it lit. You gotta go to extremes when the humidity from living on the water and in the south make your charcoal extremely wet to the point where your stuff won't get lit. All right, we got it lit. Now it's just a matter of letting the uh, coals gray over and uh, getting our crabs on there. All right, I think the coals are pretty much ready. I'm kind of running out of daylight here. So I'm gonna put them on and then, and I do have some seasoning. I'm using two different types of seasoning. Some Chef Paul Seafood Magic, which is really good. And then one of my favorite is the Slap Your Mama seasoning. So it's by Walkers and Sons. If I can, I'll probably link it down in the, in the uh, description below. And then I got just some spray on butter. I can't believe it's not butter. So really simple. So I'm just gonna pretty much shake the water off of them. And lay them right on. All right, so I just laid all the crabs. Now I need to be quick with this because they cook pretty dang fast. First thing I'm gonna do is take this butter spray and just spray the whole thing. You don't have to go too crazy. You can put as much or as little as you like. Half of them I'm gonna do the Slap Your Mama seasoning. You can get it real good on there. That's where you get the flavor. Okay, then the other half, I'm gonna do the Chef Paul Seafood Magic. Get a good coating, so because this stuff's really good, and you're not adding any other salt or pepper unless you want to. So you want a good coating of that seasoning, and then look how pretty they are. They'll be turning orange. So then we're gonna close and let it steam. I got the vent closed here, and uh, we're just gonna let them steam. Oh man, they're steaming up good been about seven or so minutes so they could use some more cooking because you want all of it to turn orange so there's still a little bit of blue there i'm gonna touch it up with some more butter here nothing too crazy this is a really simple everybody has their own way of doing it but this is the way i like to do it and usually it turns out pretty good so it's a pretty evening got mom and bobo over here so what you doing, buddy? Huh? He's scared he's of the like... cat. He's scared of the cat. Yeah, Bubba doesn't like other animals. He's a black and white shizu. He doesn't really look natural outside. He's sweet, baby. <laughs> All right, we're going to take him off the grill. It's been about 15 minutes, so you do want to cook them 10 to 15 minutes, if not a little bit longer because they're steaming. So you want them fully cooked. You want them all to, to turn orange and the meat inside to turn white. So we're going to get them off the grill. Look at that butter sitting down in the middle of them. And you can see the two different types of seasoning. You got the light seasoning over here. And then you have the little darker chef paws over here. So we're going to take them off because they've all turned orange. That's exactly what you want right there. So I'm going to put them in a stainless steel pan and uh, plate them and eat them. All righty. Last one here. Check out that beautiful pan of grilled, smoky, spicy blue crabs. Run out of daylight. We're going to take these inside and go eat them. They need to cool down first before we do. So, But uh, I'm probably going to close out the video here. All right, mom's gonna take those inside. Look how good they look. So they're still pretty hot to the touch right now. So we're gonna go inside and let them cool down. It's a pretty simple recipe that anybody can do and it doesn't require a lot of flavors. If you enjoyed this video, go hit that like button down below. But I'm gonna end this video here. I wanna thank the good Lord up for everything does for us. We'll see us later.